Let's go out to Stockton, California, home of the Diaz brothers, and talk to Alex. What's up, Alex? Hi, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Um, hopefully better after this call. <laughs> oh, good. There's been two tough ones, so give me an easy one. Oh, in that case, that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm here with you. Let's do it. What's up? Okay, so let me start by the question. Um, is there anything else I can do to help or stop my 12-year-old daughter from getting bullied? Oh, man. At school? Yeah. Uh, all right, so as you can imagine, I've dealt with this situation for my whole career. So I'm going to go all the way to the back, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. They're going to sound hard. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, before I do that, explain to me, teach me about the bullying. What's going on? So the past, um, I believe, three years, she has been going through a lot of bullying, a group of friends, and um, they. I've constantly been called. I've went there. I've huffed and puffed and demanded to talk to the bully's parents, and it is impossible I can't even set up a meeting with the parents. I can't even leave my phone number to the parents. It's like they cut off complete communication or any kind of like negotiation. I I feel like the school is just, I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm just like a mix of emotions. Well, what, what, I, uh, I'm going to do something I rarely don't do, but I understand the school's position on this one. Usually I'm complaining about the schools. I would, I'm glad that kids can't come to school and demand con my contact information and call me. I think that's, I think that's unwise. You see, you know what I'm saying? I get that, but I also get I that you want, you want justice and tell me what's, what they're doing to your daughter. Uh, they're constantly calling her names, and um, every time that I go and complain to the office, it's like she they start calling her a snitch, and um, so she stops telling me, but I can tell she's still going through it. <laughs> and what's the school's response? It's always a program. It's always like, oh, let's do this first. Let's do this first. And then I'm, it's been three years, Sean. Like, where is going to be the final, the, the finale? Where are we going to get to the actual response to it? I mean, they put her in so many programs. Like, it just feels like they're more into trying to make the changes on her than the actual bullies. That might not be what's happening in closed doors, but that's how I feel. That's actually been the move, okay? And there was, um, so bullying is complex, right? So just for everybody listening, um, bullying is repeated harm. It can be harassment too, but it's repeated and it often um, has a, almost I think by definition has a power hierarchy to it, okay? So um, it's the kid who's not the athletic one and the other athletic kids mm -hmm. are onto them or they're the not so pretty because they're going through an awkward phase and the kids are mean or they've got braces. In the, so there's a, there's a hierarchy, there's a power dynamic there. Um, mm -hmm. And for years, there was a bunch of conversations about how to deal with the bully. And a friend of mine um, named Steve who's a counseling guru said he was concerned about this 20 years ago because we had stopped teaching kids how to deal with bullies and we had just focused fully on uh, fully on on the bad guys whoever the bad guys happen to be and we have to remember bad guys are kids right so mm -hmm. i do expect the school to come in and say you will not say those things and i also expect parents in somewhat schools to begin to react to or teach the person who's on the receiving end um, especially in what I would call non-physical violence, right? You're not going to die or get put in a hospital if you don't deal with this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. They've got to deal with, they've got to learn those skills because this is going to be, people are mean, right? You deal with this out in the real world, right? Outside oh, yeah. of school. So um, here's a hard question. 
what are the things they are saying? And I ask this because there's different levels of sensitivity and I know I'm gonna get in trouble on the internet and that's fine. What I'm wondering is this, is the school looking at the situation and yeah. seeing a group of friends um, saying, nice, I'm just gonna say what my friend said. Nice face, Deloney. They used to call me Zitcom because I had bad acne as a kid. Zitcom, they used to say it all the time. But these are like my best friends in the world. And it was mean, it hurt my feelings, but also I said my things back and we, like that was, it was just, a, so I wouldn't have been classified as bullying, right? Yeah. Um, and so sometimes there are, since there's kids whose sensitivity alarms is, is, is more uh, finely tuned. And there are sometimes parents who, if their kid comes home, they said something mean, just blow the roof off of everything. I'm calling everybody. So like, I just as an objective third party outsider, I've got a 13 year old myself. What are they saying to your daughter? So it's are they a, not including all, her? Are they being mean? Are they just saying, Hey, we don't want you to come to our sleepover party. And that's the bullying you're talking about. Like, what are we talking about here? No, they, they actually call her names. Um, I, I'm not going to say which names, but they're really insulting about her looks. Like you just mentioned. Okay. Um, and, um, I've, I've explained it to her, the difference between bullying and being a jerk, Okay. you know, and, and I, I do tell her, like, you have to understand there's some people that have a personality that, you know, they're just not happy all the time. And then you have the other people that are just like picking at you, like poking the bear, you know, and that's what she's telling me is happening. <laughs> So there's a bully researcher by the name of Izzy, I think it's Comlin, Kimlin, Coleman, Izzy Coleman. That's what Izzy Coleman. And he talks about one of the corners, like one of the keys of poking the bear is a bear that is unable to be poked. Mm -hmm. So I know you've had that conversation with her. When one of these kids says something about her appearance, and by the way, mm -hmm. these aren't her friends. Like, I wouldn't even refer to them as your friends at school. They mm -hmm. clearly are not. If she's, yeah. been, if she's been like, hey, that's not funny. I don't like that. And mm -hmm. they're like, eh, we do. We're going to keep doing it. Um, exactly. Then they're not her friends, right? Um, what is, what's the response when you walk her through, like, hey, you know what? If somebody says something, walk away. Like they're looking for the response. We're not going to give them the response because clearly if they're saying something that ugly, there's something going on in their heart and mind in their house. So she said that at first she did walk away. Like she did walk away, but it just seemed like it wasn't, it, it didn't stop. And I have actually went through bullying myself and the same thing happened to me. You know, I don't feel like walking away actually helps it. It just makes it more, easier for them because they don't get in trouble for it because all you're doing is walking away. Except and, that when uh, you, except that when you tell mm -hmm. it, they, they double up, right? Yeah, oh, not only yeah. do you have braces or not only are you flat chested or not only do you not have the right hair. Now you're a snitch too. Yeah, exactly. So is he, uh, Dr. Kalman has a technique where he will, has somebody says, um, Oh my gosh, you're so fat, right? And and the response is, you're the most beautiful kid in school. <laughs> or, oh my gosh, you're such a slow runner. Well, you're the fastest runner out here. And that there is a counterweight that is so significant to that. Mm -hmm. And the response is often a one word, like, yeah. Or, huh. Now. That might be an after-school special response. But when I read it, it sounded at least like, huh. It's just like, I, I'm not, I, it's so, I'm not playing that game. Now, does that take the sting out of what they said? No. Mm -hmm. I just, I've, as an educator, I've found it harder and harder to legislate that. Like, because kids are going to say things to kids. They're going to post things about kids. They're going to write things in little notes. And I get that we want to stop that. If we see it, we're going to call it out. We're going to bring kids in and say, hey, it's devastating to talk about somebody's physical appearance. Don't do that. Don't do that. And mm -hmm. if I hear about it again, you're going to be in detention. But that's hard, you know, right? So I was going to say, if 
even if she did do that, it's going to be a little bit difficult for her because she's going through a lot of depression, anxiety, and for her to be like positive response back when she just feels completely down, um, that's difficult for her because I've tried to tell her something like that. And here, here, here's you know, what, I totally get it. I totally get it. But here's what I want to say. You'll have to choose your heart here. Continuing for three years on a track that's not working. Mm-hmm. Absent, take your kid out of school. And that sounds like you just get a kid out of there. Well, if you're a working parent in a, like in a community, that's, that's not always that easy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, I can't just, just quit work and homeschool you because we got bills to pay. So I, I, there's, there's a, there's, there's a trapped element here. Right. Um, mm-hmm. She's going to have to choose her hard. What I think y'all should spend some time doing instead of just telling her, you need to, you need to, y'all have to role play this thing. Y'all are going to have to practice and practice and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. Almost to the point that it becomes silly. Here's how that looks in my house. Okay. And this is something that I've been practicing for years. Is this the right way to do this? I don't think so, but it's a Mm -hmm. way and it worked for me as a kid. If I say, Gosh, it stinks in here. My son will just automatically, without even looking up, go, you stink. (laughs) And without even blinking, my daughter will just respond, your face stinks. Here's what I'm trying to teach them, and I've been teaching this for years in my house. Number one, um, there's a time and a place. And if there's other adults, if I'm being serious, that behavior doesn't happen. But I don't want words from other kids to have quite the sting. And so Mm -hmm. we've turned that into a game. Yeah. Their bodies are not going to respond as though it's a threat. Now, if they're in love with somebody, if this is their core group of people, different ballgame. But if the instant response is, oh, I've played basketball, I've got another shot then, then it changes the dynamic. Okay? That's not for every family, and that's definitely not for every kid. So I can't recommend Mm -hmm. that. But a practice of... Um, your shoes are ridiculous. Those are the cheapest shoes. Well, you have the nicest shoes. It's less about being super positive. And what we're doing is we're just teaching a different karate kick, right? But it's one that's Mm -hmm. not going to get anybody in trouble. It's just going to stop the behavior. Because here's what we know. Walking away, as you said, isn't super helpful. Telling on them isn't super helpful, right? Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. other things you've tried? Trying to get in touch with their parents, not super helpful. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? So, uh, uh, can I tell you this one time though, that it actually, I felt like a win. Yeah, go for it. Um, so there was this one time after I, uh, picked up my daughter after school and we were driving back home and we see one of the bullies going into their house. So I saw where the bully lived and, um, and I told my daughter, I said, tell that bully that if he doesn't stop. We know where he lives and I'm going to go talk to his mom and the bully. My goodness. His response was like, I don't give a F. So I was like, Oh, okay. He doesn't care. No problem. So I go and knock on the door, talk to the mom and the mom acts like she's so surprised. It's the first time her hearing it, even though the school said that they called her a million times. Right. So then I, It still happened after that, went back a second time, and I end up telling her, listen, this has been going on, and this was back a few months ago, so it was like two years. I was like, this has been going on for two years. I'm tired of it. I'm at my wit's end, and I'm telling you, I'm going to put a juvenile restraining order on your child on behalf of my daughter, which means that you would have to transfer to a different school and probably move because we live really close by. And I don't want to do that. That's the last thing that I want to do. And you're not going to believe it, John. That bully stopped completely. Oh, I don't doubt it for a second. <laughs> I don't doubt it for a second. Um, why haven't you done that to all those kids? Why haven't you put a restraining I, order on them? I, well, that's the thing that I don't know where they live. And yeah, but the, the police do. Yeah, I and you know what? And I've tried to call the police too. By the way, they've been called like twice. The first time it was because my daughter wanted to um, 
end her life. And she said it in school and they called the police and they suggested me to take her to the crisis center. And, um, the second time was me calling them about this bullying thing. And it just seems like the police is more on how the school is handling it. Yeah. So, well, no, is, is there an option? That. Is there an option to take her out of this situation? Just get her out of the mess. Yeah. But you know, I feel like transferring is not going to do anything. The bullies are still going to bully. If it's not my daughter, it's going to be someone else. I understand that. But right now let's take care of your daughter. Like you're right. There's a longer game to play here, but every day this thing goes on, your daughter's is, is at the, in the middle of it. Yeah. And at right. least it gives a control alt delete for your daughter. Cause she's gonna have to learn some skills. Yeah. We cannot have a culture where everybody is walking around because it just, because that window gets narrower, narrower and narrower and narrower. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to have, uh, when I, what I mean by that, the window gets narrower from what hurts my feelings and what I consider bullying versus what you consider bullying. And it, and then all of a sudden none of us can move. Yeah. And then the only move is start canceling people, right? That's been our culture the last five or six years. So she's going to have to learn some skills on standing up for herself, on not accepting this, on walking away, on appropriately challenging back, um, et cetera. And that will help with, as she learns, gains confidence in those responses, she, that will help her entire psyche. And you're watching your daughter shrivel up in front of you over the last three years. Get her out of this environment, man. If you can, get her out. You're right. And then we'll play the long game. Fair? Fair. I don't want you to look at this like you lost. I want you to look at this like you saved your daughter's life. Okay. You're right. Because I feel like you're going to war with a bunch of 13-year-olds and 12-year-olds. And I feel like you're going to war with 12-year-olds and parents that you've never met and may never meet. And you're going to war against a school that isn't doing enough to protect your daughter. And you're going to war against a young girl's mental health challenges that are continuing to dwindle in front of you. What I'm going to tell you is quit going to war. Get your daughter out of this mess. Take her to a safe place. And then you can begin teaching her some skills. Then y'all can practice at home. Not in the car on the way to work. Like, all right, so if anyone says anything, you're just going to say, no, no, no. We're just going to role play at home. No, your shoes are stupid. Oh, you've got great shoes. You can't even run right. Is that fun when you say that? Yeah. Hmm. We're just going to practice those things. And it may not pay yeah. off when she's 13. It may not pay off when she's 14. But when she's 19 in college and somebody says something like that, man, she's going to have a skill set that many 19-year-olds don't have. And so everybody listening to this, um, This bullying stuff is such a disaster. It's such a mess because it's so clear that it destroys kids. And it's also so clear that it's kids doing – it's kids trying to be funny or kids trying to not feel less than. And it's hard to legislate that. It's very hard because you can outlaw saying mean things, but that's going to be subjective across the board. And you can outlaw – um, if you say this one more time to this kid, you are out of here, which I think should have happened in this case. And the school has chosen not to do that for whatever reason. I'm going to double down if I can, if any possibility, and get my kid out of there. I'm also going to double down and try to teach my kid some skills. And if I don't have those skills, we're going to get with a child counselor. We're going to figure these skills out, work with a school counselor at this new school. But I'm going to quit going to war. I'm going to quit banging my head for three years because the whole time I'm banging my head, my kid is going to school there every day, every day there, every day. And parents, if you have a kid who's a jerk, stop it. Stop it. It's not funny. It's funny when my seven-year-old makes a joke at my expense. That's funny. But we're all in it together. But you'll never hear my daughter do that to somebody else because she's too sensitive. She cares too much about other people. Raise kids who care about other people. Bullying starts and stops in the house often. 
Stop. Stop. Because there's another little kid on the other side of this that's trapped. 